do the disciples go through the stage where they become powerful gods and they create their own worlds and live in that for a million of years do they have to curb this desire in order to go beyond the complete liberation whether they get these god like powers well, first of all i am going to tell you very honestly i don't know we are currently in the human domain we know only what a human is capable of knowing and that is a lot actually we know a lot but uh, there are some things which we can know only when we progress beyond human the situation in which we are are we not capable of many things compared to the other uh, creatures for example there are limitations to our consciousness right now we can see only a few things but if we compare our abilities to them the less evolved creatures you see that we are surely able to do a lot we have more powers if the evolution progresses like this you can now project it in a certain way where it is going so yes there will be more capabilities now what kind of capabilities you will come to know uh, if you want you can uh, take the stories on faith there is no harm in that because you see a lot of commonly held beliefs about what really happens once the human step is passed in the evolution yes more powers more uh, freedom more bliss and we are closer to the light because we are the light so the jeev the um, expression of the universal memory comes very very close to the absolute this is all possible now he is saying whether they necessarily go through this and there is my opinion here and it is only an opinion i cannot say really what happens so it is possible to skip it it is possible to skip all these light beings and uh, god like powers and <laughs> you see because you have the freedom isn't it i have a power to dig up the mountain nearby this is a big power that i have and i, I even have machines to turn the mountain into a pit but i am free to not do it if i see any utility in that i'll do it if i want to make a road through it a tunnel through the mountain yes i'll do it but if i if i don't see any use of it i already see there are like infinite universes already so i don't really see any use of making one more i simply go and occupy the one that is already there if needed at all i don't think such a powerful thing needs anything actually and uh, i i have the power to skip everything i don't need to go through all that circus of creating this and creating that and helping this being and i can all skip it all so that is my opinion that if you want you can skip everything you can skip some stages in the evolution but yes because of the freedom that we get get it is all available to us don't you need to learn all the things that all the masters say i am repeating the question do you need to learn everything that all the masters say i'll tell you a secret it's a very very big secret but it is a open secret all of them they say only one thing all of them they are saying one thing in different ways remember this secret you go and read the bible it is exactly the same as adi shankara acharyas vivek chudamani nothing different there you read the hermetic principles exactly same as the sankhya philosophy nothing different the what is what is different is opinions not the truth the truth is one we don't need to study all of that we don't need to study all that is outdated and uh, the languages are lost and their interpretations are too many like you will find the same poem interpreted in 20 ways now which one is right tell me i am going to give you the 21st opinion here how will you know it is right opinion it is so interesting that these people whom we call ancient uncivilized beggars they had access to the philosophies that are so advanced that even the educated people the highly educated people don't understand it them they don't have this knowledge it is a kind of paradox we think not only we actually every generation thinks that they are the most superior kind 
every, every this is human nature hubris is human what i was saying is that i'm not going to give you uh, my opinion i'm going to give you something which will stop all these questions forever look at your experience look at your experience and know everything and then you will understand everything that everybody has said can you tell me how much time it takes to translate the ashtavakra gita and avdhut gita can anybody guess <laughs> to translate the ashtavakra gita into english ashish singh years i'll tell you if you don't know what is written there it, it is going to take years because yes you will study the dictionary you will need this book you will then study go and study and this pandit that pandit this uh, um, interpretation you will need to visit this library that library and because the book is rare you won't find it anywhere it took me only 7 days to translate both ashtavakra gita and avdhut gita if you don't believe go and just read the book i have published it the links are on my blog if you know what they are talking about it will take you few days it took me 7 days so <laughs> is it a miracle no am i somebody who is kind of extraordinary no i simply know what they know that's all i receive many emails i receive many good letters praising this thing that i have never seen this kind of translation before and uh, honestly the translation usually one or two lines Ash, the Av, avdhut has not said anything which needs to be elaborated in um, like uh, 500 pages which these authors do most of the time it can be said in one line i told you that day the truth is very very simple yes you can spice it up with all the commentary and all the metaphors and all and then the message is lost in translation actually so my uh, kind of mission here my job is to clear the clutter clear the mess clear the dirt that has piled up on the ancient knowledge and the knowledge is not ancient the knowledge is timeless isn't it the same knowledge holds in every time all the time in every era the same knowledge is there so i gave you a key here get the knowledge forget the ashtavakra and avdhut and kabir and uh, gautam buddh forget these people go to the nearest guru choose a path go to the nearest guru ask the guru what is the truth what is the ultimate truth you see most of the people believe that this world is my house this world is my home we need to save the environment we need to save um, the plants and animals and uh, we need to make a good future for our children and all and i need to live here for eternity so <laughs> i want everything perfect here there should not be any volcanoes there should not be any earthquakes no tornadoes no hurricanes and no um, bad diseases no terrorism no wars i want all this to be gone why because this is my home this planet is our home don't rely on interpretations please hear me you need to get the knowledge knowledge is not in the books i wasted many years studying the books there is nothing in the books if you ask me about uh, an, uh, some other great master and if i have not done the study then it will be a pure wild guess so i am giving you a warning like this i am not going to say i no no i don't want to tell you no that is not the reason that i don't tell you the reason is you won't learn anything ask me your question it is not true that everybody will die in awareness it is not true yes there are many people who die in awareness who are very very lucid while the death is happening and i have seen that this will happen only when and the death happens in a in natural condition which means uh, there are they are not under influence of any drug even if they are in a tremendous amount of pain the pain is natural isn't it the pain does nothing to your awareness actually the pain will bring in the awareness you can use the pain to come into awareness you can do it right now also you see right now you are just lost in your thoughts somebody takes a pin and pricks you complete awareness instantly full attention 
And there are two factors here. How much is your practice? That is first thing. Have you done any practices, any experiments at all in the waking state, at least, if not in dreaming or subtle states, see very few people do that. At least if you have done something in the waking state, you will have something to hold on to while dying. And uh, if you have not done anything, your whole life uh, was spent in sleeping. Sleeping like in a spiritual um, context, in a, in a spiritual meaning. You have never practiced awareness, even why, even after knowing that there is such a thing, I need to do this, even after the instructions were given by your guru, you did not do it, then most probably, even if you die in natural conditions, most probably you will lose all awareness. Because of the fear and because of all the pending desires, the mind will create a dream and then and the next thing you know is next birth. You, you won't know anything else in between. And you will be born with a complete uh, erasure of the memory. No memory of what happened before birth. And I think only one in a million dies in a aware death. The rest, because they are not practitioners, they don't do it. Now let us focus on the practitioner. If, if a practitioner is, is practicing awareness exercises, uh, experiments in the waking state, as we recommend, it is very, very simple, isn't it? And if he is not given any kind of medicines that pollute the nervous system, then probably he will be able to maintain the awareness. The awareness will not be pulled down by the nervous system or the body. Uh, and uh, he is not terrified and all those things. See, the mental condition is stable. And probably he will be able to maintain awareness and he can skip a few births there. He can directly go to the subtle state instead of the gross state, which means the rebirth. Now, there can be a good practitioner and at the time of death he gets terrified because his guru is not there, his fellow practitioners are not there around him. He is surrounded by worldly people who are crying and shouting and making a mess of the situation. So, that brings down the awareness of the dying person. And um, for example, if he is in, in sleep state, he dies in the sleep or he dies in a dream state, he will get launched into some other world. He, he won't be able to maintain the awareness. And unfortunately, if he is on heavy medi medication, painkillers, anesthesia and all those um, drugs are into his body, then uh, probably he won't be able to maintain the awareness, even if he is a big practitioner, even if he is an experienced practitioner. Now, I'll tell you something which is very, very interesting. If he is a tantric belonging to the Shev community or the Shakti community, which is possible only in India and in a very, very, um, what do you call it, secretive environment, like they are cults, they are literally cults, they will take you in their cult only after a long test or something. And they keep drinking all day. Uh, they are always under a drug like dhatura or bhang or something. But why do they do that? Are they kind of drug addicts or they are spoiled sadhus or something? Yes, probably many of them are. But there are great masters in those cults, in Aghori and all those cults. What are they doing? They are preparing for death. They are trying to induce an environment in their mind which is equal to that of, similar to that of death, which is drunkenness, loss of awareness and uh, projections of the dream worlds. That is what is going to happen. Now, because of their practice, they train their nervous system and their mind to remain aware in those states. Uh, don't ask me, how do I know? I remember that I heard it only once from the mouth of none other than Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev, you see. So you can um, say that, yes, there is some truth in that. But my logical mind says that, yes, there is a reason that they are doing it. There is a, there is a reason that they keep uh, their nervous system in a certain state all the time. Uh, probably not all the time, but most of the time. And there is a warning here, please don't try to do <laughs> Please don't try that. Don't try at home. This is very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Some of them will even ingest 
uh, snake poison cobra poison and uh, there is some infamous video on the youtube where sadguru himself drinks the uh, cobra poison in front of the camera now please don't do this don't do this the poison if you drink it, it's not going to hurt you only if it gets into the blood it will kill you instantly so don't do all these experiments which only the masters are capable of what happens is if you practice like this you will die in complete awareness even if the doctor has given you the strongest of anesthesia you will die in full awareness actually these people are always on the astral plane most of the time what does that mean they are always somewhere in the dead zone all the time if you project out of the body and you have these tendencies or probably past life tendencies you are bound to meet one of these tantrics so they are usually attracted to practitioners who knows they are dead or they are alive we don't know all these things so because i am not uh, master in these things i i can i can give you only this kind of general knowledge you okay? i can tell you a story that's all so my experience says and that there are few very gifted people who know that they are going to die probably months before they they make arrangements for death and then they leave the body in complete awareness so hopefully <laughs> that gives you uh, now i i don't say that don't don't read these things and don't watch the videos and don't uh, listen to sadguru and other tantrics you can you can this is highly interesting this is like uh, you know probably more interesting than any hollywood movie out there because you know there is some truth in that and that makes it even more interesting there are books like uh, himalayan masters uh, and by swami rama and uh, you say and by shri m there are books and then obviously by sadguru there are books he is the great living tantric of our times don't miss anything but let me tell you not everything is right there not everything is true there sometimes the stories are made up just to attract crowd and the, when the crowd gathers they do their magic and they attract the crowd to um, turn them into spiritual seekers shashank is asking can we say that existence is only ability to experience uh, plus memory nothing else yes 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 absolutely yes you are right existence is experiencing itself and it is able to experience something and make sense of something only because there is memory that means the experiences stick the experiences become sticky there is a possibility in the existence for this to happen and that is why i call it the universal memory nowadays i don't even call it mind you see i i found that it is kind of confusing so i am calling it only memory there is nothing else there except this memory and since it is the experiencer itself it is the experiencer itself taking the form like the water takes the form of the waves the experiencer takes the form of structures in the memory these structures in the memory are non physical non uh, mental non temporal non local that is their emptiness and uh, we are having a dream like experience of objects which is created using the mind using the sensory apparatus that we have the sensory apparatus is made up of nothing but the self organized memory only it is amazing that this has happened and that is why we say don't waste your life this happens one in a trillion times in this universal memory don't waste this opportunity know yourself 